to Wally Bar and I've just adjusted up my in-feed and out-feed rollers for this machine and it seems to be working quite nicely. It's quite narrow, a little bit of wood and you know it just pulled it through with no trouble at all. So I thought I'd just show you um, what I did and try and allow you to have an understanding on, on how it actually works and how important the adjustment is, but also it's not that difficult. So I'm just going to quickly show you what I did. I'm not going to actually adjust the machine because I just did it. Now I don't want to throw it out of adjustment because it seems to be working really nicely at the moment. So what we're going to do is we're going to show you how it actually works, the concept behind it, so you can actually do it for yourself. So I'm going to take this hood off and explain what's going on here first. Now, if I can get this in here like so, can you see down there? Let's move that camera down a bit lower, shall we? Do, 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 do. There we are. There you are, there are your rollers. Okay, we have our cutter block, which is a two knife cutter block. And I'll tell you what I should really be doing is actually unplugging the machine. Let me just do that. Okay, that's done. <laughs> okay, um, obviously always when you take that off, make sure you've unplugged the machine because otherwise you might chop your fingers off and it won't be very nice. So basically what we have here is an uh, in-feed roller, an out-feed roller and the cutter block. Ignore these pieces here because all they are is part of the construction of the chassis of the machine. They basically hold the two sides together and then at the top and then some at the bottom. But we're talking about the in-feed and out-feed rollers. And in this case we have a serrated roller that one there, and then we have a smooth outfeed roller, which is that one there, and it's smooth so we don't put marks on our piece of wood. Now if it's too smooth, what will happen is it will polish, and also if the adjustment is wrong, it will polish, and it will create either burning or some nasty like black marks on top of your piece of wood. Um, not necessarily through friction, but more a case that there's any residue on here, like resins and stuff, will get left on your piece of wood. So it's important that we adjust these two rollers in conjunction with the table, but equally in conjunction with the cutter block. Now what I tend to do is I adjust the um, cutter block, oh, sorry, the in-feed roller with the cutter block, allowing for some up, so, so, some rise and fall within the tension. And also on the uh, outfeed table, I allow for the fact that we remove some material. So it has to allow for the fact the wood is actually a little bit thinner. So let me just show you what we do. Do 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 do. But let's remove the camera. So easy to remove on that machine. The other one is a pain. Screws and stuff you can undo. So here we have it. We have our machine and we have our drive mechanism as you can see. Now we have the outfeed roller drive which is that one and we have the infeed roller drive and it's driven by this chain which runs off this pinion gear at the bottom here which then goes to the main drive that's powered by the electric two horsepower motor. Now that's tensioned by this tensioner and these little um, guides here are our little bronze um, bushes or bronze or off, soft, yeah I think they are bushes and they provide tension on the chain. So effectively, these two rollers are driven together at equal speed. But what we're actually talking about here is these two things here. There's one here and there's one there. And there's one on the, on the end of the roller on that side and one on the end of the roller on that side also. Now they are all, all four of those have two lots of adjustments. There's eight lots of adjustment. And you adjust them using your spanners. And in this case, if I can find what I've done with it, it was hiding. Now I'm being attacked by the cover. Right, so we've got two, two spans in this case. Your system might be slightly different, you might have Allen screws, all sorts of things. But basically all that's happening is we are adjusting the height of the roller in relationship to this table and in relationship to the um, cutter block itself. Now the roller that's most important really to get 100% right is the in-feed roller. Now that's quite an easy one to do. We adjust that to the bottom of the um, knives on the cutter block and we allow for the, uh, enough travel within this tension spring here so it can actually um, go down enough but equally it can rise under tension enough and pull your piece of timber through. So although it's in line with that, it pushes up and makes clearance for the cutter block. So, you know, it can remove some material. 
So if these were rigid, you it wouldn't work. You just wouldn't have to pull the wood through. It would just, it would just be like stop and start constantly. So we can adjust these, and we do that with these two spans in this case, and there's a locking nut, and there's an adjustment nut. Now the height of the roller is done on the bottom one against the stop, so we can slacken that off, and then we can adjust that nut to suit to get that into the correct position. And then we can lock it off with the locking nut above. And you basically you know, tighten up against each other and that locks it off. It's quite an old idea, but it works. And the same with the tension. You can increase or lower the tension by releasing the locking nut first. Just get it on there, it's quite tight. And then you tighten up or, un or loosen the top nut. And once you've got it where you want it to be, you then tighten the locking nut up against it. So you're literally just tightening up against each other so they don't work their way loose. You don't have to overdo it, just hand tight is enough. So now what we've got is we've got this roller now set so it's parallel with this table and I'll show you on the whiteboard what I mean by that and the outfeed table we also have to adjust the outfeed table but we have to allow for a slightly thinner piece of timber because you've actually removed some material. So let's take the camera to, to the um, whiteboard and I'll try and explain what I mean on this. Move them out of the way. <sighs> anyway, while you're here, if you want to click open and subscribe and maybe the little bell icon. And um, yeah, because then you get a little warm fuzzy feeling in your pocket, that'll be me uploading another video. But for now, let's talk about this. Well, these rollers, these in feed and out feed. Rollers. I've done a couple of little diagrams for you. Just give you a little idea what is going on. So let me go a bit higher. Da, 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 da. Right, so where we have it, we have three examples there. First example is correct. So the in-feed roller, which is the serrated roller, is parallel with the table, and the out-feed roller also has to be parallel with the table. So the in this case here with this one with the, the roller here is not parallel with the table, what will happen is the roller will only make contact with the corner of the piece of wood, as you can see there. So it's only making contact here, which means it's not gripping there. And equally, if for instance there was enough rise and fall in the tension of the springs, you'll have more pressure here, all that might be in contact there, the pressure will be too low, and it won't pull your piece of wood through nice and evenly, you know, and, and constant pressure. So it's important to get the rollers parallel with the table. So the first roller I like to get sorted out and get in the right position is the in-feed roller. And how I do it, I make the in-feed roller in line with the bottom of the cut of the cutter block. So if this knife was here, for instance, as you can see, if it was there, I'd make that roll at the same height as that, but equally I'd make sure then I've got travel within the tension, the range of the tension and the stops of the roller, so the roller can move up high enough out of the way, but also be low enough um, to make contact with the piece of timber. So for instance, in this case, say for instance it's a 3 mil depth of cut, one eighth of an inch depth of cut, you need to be able to um, make sure that there's at least one and a half mil, bare minimum one and a half mil above and below the center point to make sure that this is going to make contact on both sides. It could be more than that, ideally, it could be five mil, it could be six mil, it could be eight mil, you know, quarter inch or higher. It doesn't matter as long as it's making even contact. It can't be less than one and a half millimeters, and the one and a half mil would pretty much be on slipping point anyway. So. That one is set to, so the in-feed roll is set to your cut block. Now once you've got those two, so you do it on first, and obviously the table, have you make sure it's set to the actual cut block. And how I do that, I do that with a piece of wood. So I run a piece of wood through the plane, this is nice and square and true. I then place it on the, maybe on the lowest point or of the actual cut block. And then I bring the roll, I adjust the rollers down to that piece of wood. And then I make sure there's enough range in the tension of the springs. So it can either go, oh, good my compressor. Um, either go up or it can go down. And then I do the same on the other side there. So then we then have our in-feed roller and our cut block adjusted together. And that leaves us with our out-feed roller. Now the out-feed roller is a little bit different because we've removed some material. 
So for a bit of wood that we've run through our plane, it was 20 millimeters thick at this point. Once it's gone through the plane, I took three millimeters off. It is 17 millimeters thick, and in, obviously in imperial. You know, if it's uh, three quarters, you took an eighth of an inch off. You're gonna be left with whatever's left. <laughs> I remember by Imperial, sorry. <laughs> and, uh, so basically, it's um, would it be five six tick? Oh, yeah, I don't know that. Would that, would that five eight? No, five eight, six eight. Oh, I don't know. But anyway, so <laughs> that'll be thinner than what it is there. So you have to make allowance for that. So this roller, the eight feed roller, needs to be adjusted. Its bottom point needs to be lower to make contact with the piece of wood as it exits the table. Now. You might have had a few issues with your piece of wood, you pass it through your plane and what have you. This is another reason why the adjustment of the rolls is quite important. It's because you can get a thing called, you know, you can get this scop come out of the end of your piece of wood. Now, if you're wondering, if you see that and you're wondering how that happens, and you, so you pass your bit of wood through and you've got this extra little bit removed at the end, that's where it rolls. So your wood bit's coming up through here and your in-feed roll, that piece of wood has no longer been pressed down by the in-feed roll. So if you haven't supported your wood, let's say for instance you're, I don't know, you're running a, a stair string through the staircase, and it's three metres, maybe four metres even along, and you haven't provided it with enough support, what happen, can happen is it can drop at the end, and then when it comes off this in-feed roller, it will go upwards and then become scalloped from whatever distance that is from there to the cutter block, for that length of timber, if the, the, closer, the closer the rollers are to the cutter cut block, the shorter the actual scallop is going to be. So it is quite important to make sure that you provide support for your piece of wood. But if it's a short piece of wood, for instance, you're putting that bit through I had earlier, or a bit like that, and you're running it through, it's quite important that the tension on the outfeed roller is correct. You've got enough pressure on there to hold that piece of wood firmly to the table as it leaves the cutter block. So if the tension's too low on the outfeed roller, the, it, the wood will leave the in-feed roller and effectively it could potentially make too much contact or the actual um, cutter block could grab the wood and pull it towards itself and then create that scholar. So it, that, they're just little things you just have to bear in mind and once you understand the concept behind how it actually works, it's actually quite simple. And once you set it up the lot, you might not need to do it again for a very long time. Um, even if you even want to see if you you know you reset your your knives when you sharpen your knives you put them back in provided they go back in exactly the same position in other words, the distance from the, the tip of the edge to the actual cut block itself it's exactly the same position I do that using ah bear with me da, 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 da. I'm back using these little things here and um, they're quite good. Uh, you can get these on Axman or you can probably get them on Amazon and places like that. And a little magnetic <laughs> adjusters. <laughs> this is one I broke earlier. But <laughs> um, so effectively what it happens is it sits on top of the cutter block like so and it allows you to um, put your your knives back into your cutter block in exactly the same position. Anyway, I hope you like my little video and I hope it was clear enough for you. And if you'd be most kind and um, click like and subscribe and maybe the little bell icon because then you get a warm fuzzy thing in your pocket and that'll be me uploading another video and i know you'd be excited about that anyway thank you for watching i suppose i better go and do some work